fam. So, filming another video here for you guys. Been slacking a little bit, not gonna lie. But anyway, so I wanna go over a couple of things for the first gen and what our plans are for this truck here. First, what's gonna be the next step? So I had already told you guys I was gonna do a big six inch lift on it, all this other stuff. Well, I had called in to the shop where we were gonna order our lift kit from, and they're like, we're backed up so many weeks. So you're probably not gonna see that for a while. But I thought, you know what? I could get the horsepower stuff done that I want to get done to it first. That way it's just done while the truck's nice and low so that by the time the kit does actually arrive, all the stuff under the hood is done and wrapped up. So here's what I'm thinking and here's what I ordered. So you guys can let me know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below. But it's not going to be anything insane, but it's going to make it really fun to drive. We went with a bigger intake for the cold air side so that hopefully we can get a little bit more airflow, help cool things down a little bit, and just help the truck breathe a little bit better. We're going with 50 horse injectors, 3200 governor spring. We're going to go with a, I think it's considered a 40 horse fuel pin. We're gonna turn up the fuel screw a little bit. I don't know if I personally am gonna do that or if I'm gonna do that with somebody that is really good with that kind of stuff so that way I don't have like a runaway diesel then just end the life of my truck right there. And then we're also gonna be doing a KDP kit on this truck just as preventable maintenance. I don't know if it's been done on this truck. It may have, it may not have, I don't know, but I wanna get it done. And then in addition to that, we're gonna be running some gauges on the truck. We're gonna be running PSI for boost. We're gonna be running EGT and fuel pressure. I would do transmission temp, except this is a manual transmission truck and I just don't see it as really that important on this particular configuration. I did also get a few little dress up parts, just some look good type stuff to go into the hood. Nothing too insane, but I did get some, you know, fancy valve covers, a billet intake manifold cover, and just some other stuff, just to kind of dress it up, make it look a little fancy under the hood. But with the stuff that we're gonna be doing, hopefully it'll bring the truck up to about 250 to 350 horsepower probably closer to that 250 to 300 range. That's the plan and that's what we're gonna be doing. And why? Well, compounds and all that other kind of stuff sounds really cool, but in reality, I'm not gonna work this truck enough to need anything more than that. I just want it to be a fun, enjoyable daily driver truck with a little bit of power to get up and go. And to pull the car hauler and stuff like that. Just a super usable, daily drivable truck. On another note fam, if you have not done so yet, we have the giveaway live for this truck right here, the 2004 5.9 Cummins. And if you want to enter to win it, it's this easy. Go to lmpgear.com, buy anything out the store, and right now, until tomorrow at midnight, Every $1 gets you 20 entries to win this truck, which is our best deal of the entire giveaway. And somebody's got to take this thing home. We should have a giveaway winner for this truck within the next week, so stay tuned for that. So it's actually my birthday, and you know, I give away a lot of stuff, and I guess I do buy it and I enjoy it for a short period of time that I give it away, but I don't keep many things for myself and I don't get myself very many gifts. And so today, that's what we're gonna do. Reagan actually got me this fancy Apple Watch, which actually has my sales notifications for my store and text messages and all kinds of crazy apps and all. I really don't know how to fully use it, but it's really cool. For any of you guys who have watched me for any length of time know that I love deer hunting. I am obsessed with it. I love it. I love deer management, creating bedding areas, feeding areas. Uh, travel ways, uh, sitting in the stand morning till dark, just slinging arrows, just having fun. Like this year I've shot three deer with my compound already and that was before October 10th. I mean, it was, it's just been awesome. I've always thought about doing this and I've just always kind of pushed it off, but I think I finally want to buy a recurve bow to traditionally hunt and actually fully challenge myself, no crossbow. No compound, even though compound's still a challenge, it's really not that hard. And I know that there's gonna be people that are like, you know, people that are like against crossbows that are like, oh, compound bow hunting is the only way to really bow hunt. You know, it's it's really not that hard. It's, it's essentially a crossbow that's a little bit slower, generally speaking, and you have to hold it vertically versus sideways and just pull the trigger. You just tap the trigger on your, really. I've shot 25 deer with a compound bow in the last five years. It's fun, it is a little bit, I mean, it's more challenging than using a rifle, but I wouldn't say, you know, compounds like real bow hunting and like if you're hating on crossbow hunters, because with the technology and compounds anymore too, it's really so easy. I want to try using a recurve or longbow style hunting with that and just kind of giving that a try. I just enjoy harvesting mature deer whenever I get the chance to, 
or a young deer, just kind of depending on the situation. With a recurve, I probably wouldn't be as picky just because I just want to be able to experience going out and trying to shoot something with that. But I don't know, we'll see what happens. But I know that for right now, I want to head off and try to find a recurve bow and come back and get to shooting it. I think it'll be a lot of fun to learn something new. I've been discussing with a couple of people my next truck that I should buy, and I just don't know if you guys get sick of seeing second gens, or do you like seeing second gens? Just, I don't know. But I may have just come across a 98 12 valve with a short bed extended cab with folding doors. That's one owner, zero rust, immaculate condition. Do you guys get tired of seeing stuff like that? Let me know down in the comment section below. Well, we just left Sportsman's Warehouse. I'm on my way back to my house to play with my new bow, arrows, points, all that stuff. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna have a lot of fun, I'm excited. It was a very expensive trip to Sportsman's Warehouse, but hey man, it was my birthday. I had to do something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while now and go outside of my comfort zone and try something new with the whole archery hunting thing and try traditional archery. So we're gonna do that. And hopefully tomorrow, if you're watching the Brotherhood Outdoors channel, hopefully tomorrow we are out in the woods chasing deer with a recurve. Here is the item that I was just so excited to get. It is simply a Timber Ridge recurve bow, 50 pound draw, 60 inches top to bottom. And uh, it's fun. I've been shooting it here for the last 10, 15 minutes and already getting really comfortable with it at 20 yards. So I'm gonna set the camera up 20 yards and then show you guys how it's grouping. There's no sights on the bow, obviously. Since it's instinctive shooting, there's no sight on the bow. It's just kind of like hold and point and you just kind of get used to the way that you draw, the way that you hold it up against your cheek, the way that you release. You just kind of get used to a certain rhythm and a certain vocal point that you focus on with your target and then it's just, Instinctive, you know what I mean? That, that's why they call it instinctive shooting. So let's see if we can throw some arrows down range for you guys right there. There's the target. What is going on guys, day number two. And really quick, I wanna let you guys know of a sale we're running right now. So today is my 21st birthday, and so because of that, we're gonna be running a sale. 21% off anything on the store for all orders over $21 or more. No limits to how much you can get off in terms of like how big your order is, there's no caps on it. So if you wanna get 21% off, and also tomorrow's your last day for 20X entries, if you wanna get those entries and that discount for our products on our store, head on over to lmpgear.com, get entered to win the Whistling Diesel Dually Covens, plus $5,000 cash. The 20X entry deal is winding down and the giveaway, of course, only goes on until I think the first week of November and then it's over anyway. So don't waste any time, get in on that deal, use that discount code. The discount code is 21 off and they give you 21% off everything on the store for all orders over $21. So. Enjoyed that. Anyways, we're on our way to our new property again. I gotta stop by a utility office here in town and fill out a utility form since I'm the new owner of the property so that the previous owner doesn't keep getting a bill. And then after that, I'm gonna show you guys some of the stuff we picked up at Dunham's. And I was so bummed because like I went to Dunham's to buy some handgun ammunition and stuff because I'm like, man, like I can finally, like they're gonna ID me and I'm finally 21, I can buy that stuff, like whatever. The dude doesn't even ID me. Thanks, man, I was so excited to tell you I was finally legal to buy this handgun ammo, but didn't even check. Probably just assumed I was over 21 because I had a kid. And what's funny is I actually went to a Dunham's in Ohio as well one time. I wasn't buying handgun ammo, I was just buying rifle ammo, but I went in there and they never ID'd me then either. And it was only at Dunham's. This is the only happens to me at Dunham's. They never ID me for anything. And that's been for the last couple of years when you know, I looked borderline even old enough to buy ammo, but they're still just like, oh, is this all you need? Okay, you know, take your payment and let you walk out the door. And I was telling my brother, I'm like, literally, you could have just went in there and bought ammo at 16 and they probably wouldn't even ID you. Like, it was just like crazy to me. But, which, 
I mean, I'm legally old enough, so it's not a big deal either way, but kind of sketchy depending on who's in there buying ammo, knowing that Dunham's has a reputation for not IDing you when you buy ammunition. So the first thing you're gonna see in our bag of goodies is deer corn, which is um, just overpriced normal corn. More deer bait. Keep in mind, people, we're in the state of Ohio. More deer bait. A couple more things of deer bait. And then I bought a ton of 357 ammo. In fact, I bought all of it but two boxes that they had. One last topic before we end the video. And if you don't care about me talking about things that we're trying to plan out in terms of vehicles and items and stuff like that, then you can leave now. Um, otherwise, Reagan and I are trying to debate whether or not we want to sell the Cadillac. Why would we sell the Cadillac? You're probably wondering, why would you sell the Cadillac? You got the Cadillac, you said you're gonna keep like five years. Yeah, I did say that, I did. I said that with quite a few vehicles, actually. Actually, I take it back. I've only said that with like two vehicles and this was one of them. And the other one was her white fourth gen that when we got her that, I was like, oh, you can keep this truck for a long time, you know, whatever. No, I was like, oh, we should be practical and get an SUV. It's super comfortable, but we just don't care to drive an SUV. You know, and also the thing is a killer on insurance. Like it is just a luxury SUV. Insurance is horrible. It is really bad. I'm not even gonna go into the pricing, but let's just say the insurance is equivalent to the average car payment in the United States. It's horrible. Talking about is the potential of getting rid of the Cadillac. Essentially, a pickup truck, that would be like half the price of this thing. That way, insurance is cheaper. We don't feel as bad throwing a ton of miles on it. And so we could possibly get a tractor as well without necessarily taking out a bunch of extra cash to buy a tractor right now. Why? Well, we just bought property and there's so many things on there that we could be using a tractor for, and I really just don't want to be having to go back and forth, picking up my dad's, pulling it over there, all this other stuff, because it is a little bit of a haul. From us, it's only about 20 minutes, but if I have to go the opposite way to borrow my dad's tractor, then come back this way from their place, it's like 45 minutes. And that's not including the trip to go out of the way 20 minutes, then going the opposite way 40 minutes. So, in a nutshell, I need my own equipment because that's just gonna get old really, really fast. The thing that makes the most sense is just selling this vehicle and just getting a different pickup truck, whether it be you know a third gen or a fourth gen, but something that's half the price of this, give or take, but still super comfortable for long trips and stuff like that. And then also being able to have the wiggle room to then buy a small tractor for the property. I don't know, that's kind of what we're thinking, but nothing's set in stone. If we did decide to go with a different vehicle, 5.9 third gen mega cab, preferably, that's what I would do if I'm gonna do it, and, or a fourth gen mega cab, and a small tractor, what would you guys suggest for a small tractor? What are you guys' preferences out there? I'm not really biased to one brand or the other. I know that my uncle loves John Deere, and I know that my dad loves his Kubota uh, I think it's a 3240 and he's freaking love that tractor he's got i think like 1400 hours on it or thir or 1200 hours or something he's had it since it was brand new and he's pretty much had to fix nothing on it i mean it's pretty much just run amazing but i don't necessarily need something that's that big it's really just for like bush hogging trails that are already opened not like crazy briars and brush like they're kind of back in the woods so they don't need bush hog like crazy all the time but just like bush hogging small paths a couple times a summer and then clearing out small areas for like food plots and stuff when i say clearing out i mean like i can do chainsaw work for you know a lot of that stuff but i'm saying like uh bush hogging briars down and like tilling up ground for planting food plots and stuff so it doesn't need to be like a crazy workhorse but it just needs to be able to do small food plots and bush hogging and stuff like that you know just like a small honestly more like a homeowner style tractor would be even fine for what we're doing to get around those little trails and stuff because they're more like ATV width than anything else. Thanks for tagging along with us today, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget, if you guys want to win that truck right here plus $5,000 cash, you are running out of time. Every $1 right now is 20 entries, but that deal ends at midnight, October 14th, which if you're seeing this video the day it goes up, that's tomorrow. If you're seeing this on the 14th, today is your last day for the 20X Century deal, and then it's gone. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.